A car's engine design is beautiful. Many components inside the engine must move and rotate in perfect timing and symmetry for the engine to run smoothly. One of the main components is the timing belt. It acts as a bridge to connect integral parts of the engine. In some engines, instead of a belt, a timing chain or timing gears may also be used. So how do they work? The crankshaft is connected to the camshaft via a belt or chain. A belt drives pulleys and the chain drives sprockets. They both perform the same function. The task of the timing belt or chain is to maintain the precise timing of the engine. The timing refers to the synchronization between the crankshaft and the camshafts in an engine. This synchronization ensures that the engine's valves open and close at the proper time, allowing the engine to inhale air-fuel mixture and exhale exhaust gases. Proper timing is crucial for optimal engine performance, fuel efficiency, and emissions control. If the timing is off, it can lead to poor engine performance or even damage the engine. In many older overhead valve engines, the camshaft is located in the block near the crankshaft. Therefore, a simple gear system is often used to drive the camshaft. So if you're wondering how to find out whether your car has a timing belt, timing chain, or timing gears, here's how you can check. The easiest way is to take a quick look at the engine. If it has plastic covers on the front, it likely has a timing belt. However, if it has a sealed metal cover, it is probably a timing chain system. Alternatively, you can check the maintenance schedule for your car, which may be found in the owner's manual. Look for any indication of when you should change the timing belt. If no such interval is listed, your car probably has a timing chain. If you don't have the maintenance schedule, you can usually find the necessary information online by searching for your vehicle's make, model, and model year. In the earlier days of automotive engineering, when timing chains and belts did not exist, gears were used to synchronize shaft rotations in combustion engines. The benefit of a gear drive is that it achieves greater timing accuracy by eliminating any chain-related issues such as flex or stretch. However, gear drives are more expensive than chains and can be noisy. This noise is sometimes desirable to hot rodders as it produces a sound similar to that of a supercharger. Theoretically, gear drives are stronger, meaning they can handle significant valve spring pressure. Gear-driven camshafts provide the most accurate camshaft timing throughout the life of the engine, and typically, minimum maintenance is required. However, gear drives tend to be the noisiest of all cam drive types due to the backlash in the gears. Spur or straight-cut gears will always have a very small amount of clearance or lash in between the gears. General Motors used gear-driven camshafts for decades in their inline six-cylinder engines. Honda used gear-driven overhead camshafts in their V4 engines starting in 1984 with the VF1000R in Europe, in 1985 with the VF1000R in North America, and later with the VFR750 in 1986. Many pushrod engines used a single pair of gears to connect the crankshaft to the camshaft. A well-known example is the old Volkswagen Beetle. When there is a cam or more often two cams in the head, multiple pairs of gears are required to drive the cams. Some motorcycles from Ducati and Kawasaki, as well as some classic piston aircraft engines, have used short drive shafts with bevel gear pairs at each end to drive overhead cams. The accurate assembly is tedious. The Holden inline six engines from the gray, red, blue, and black series predominantly used timing gears. This was a common practice in many older engines. However, with the introduction of the Nissan RB30E and later the Buick LN3 V6 engines, Holden transitioned to timing chains. Timing chains were becoming more prevalent in the industry due to their benefits in terms of durability and noise reduction. However, as time progressed, designers realized that gears were not as effective for car engines. Although the gear system was solid and reliable, it had many disadvantages. One is that as the engine heats up, it expands, so the actual distance from the crankshaft to the camshafts increases. The drive shaft design easily tolerates that, but a series of spur gears will develop backlash. The engine block often requires modification, and some gear drives need a special cover which can interfere with engine-mounted accessories. 
Another potential problem is the clearance between gears which must be correct in order for the teeth to mesh properly. A line boring can change the distance between the crank and camshafts, so adjustments may be required at the idler gears. Engine builders are also aware that gear drive systems can transfer harmonics to the valve train, potentially leading to camshaft or valve train failure. Furthermore, bad timing gears cause serious engine issues like rough running and backfiring. If you ignore these problems, you might end up with more costly engine repair jobs. In the worst case scenario, you might need to replace the entire engine. Consequently, car engine makers began to use timing chains instead of relying on multiple interlocking gears, as these are better suited for transferring drive over larger distances. With the introduction of timing chains, there was a shift in car engine design. These engines were overhead cam engines. Compared to pushrod engines, overhead cam engines have a greater distance between the crankshaft and the camshaft, which means a longer timing chain is needed to connect both shafts. Also, in this design, the crankshaft sprocket had teeth that the timing chain could engage with. As a result, many American engines began using timing chains. During the 1950s and 60s, timing chains became more common in the automotive market. Because of the technology available back in the day, the use of chains in overhead cam engines often resulted in significant issues. The materials and engineering practices available were not sufficiently advanced to ensure the reliability and performance needed for these systems. As a result, many engines experienced problems such as excessive noise and vibration, which could lead to a less smooth operation. Additionally, the chains could develop slack or wear out quickly, disrupting the crucial synchronization between the crankshaft and camshaft. This could negatively impact engine timing, leading to performance issues and increased risk of engine failure. Overall, the combination of these challenges prompted manufacturers to seek more reliable alternatives, such as timing belts, to enhance the performance and longevity of their overhead cam engines. The first known car engine to use a timing belt was the American 1954 Devon Panhard, which used an engine converted from push rods to overhead camshafts through the use of a toothed belt made by the Gilmer Company. Devon Panhard's success on the track was notable as it won the Sports Car Club of America National Championship in 1956. This victory not only highlighted the capabilities of the car, but also validated the effectiveness of the timing belt system in competitive racing environments. The 1962 Glass 1004 was the first mass-produced vehicle to use a timing belt. The 1966 Pontiac overhead cam six-cylinder engine was the first U.S. mass-produced vehicle to use a timing belt, while the 1966 Fiat twin cam engine was the first mass-produced engine to use a timing belt with twin camshafts. In the 1960s and the 70s, the number of belt-driven engines on the market started increasing with the number of overhead cam engines on the market. And by the mid-80s, timing belt-driven engines outnumbered chain-driven engines all over the world. The belt is typically made from rubber, although some belts are made from polyurethane or neoprene. The belt's structure is reinforced with corded fibers, which are usually Kevlar or fiberglass. These fibers increase the tensile strength of the belt, acting as tension members while the tooth surface is reinforced with a fabric covering. In the mid to late 90s, rubber belts began featuring HSN, which stands for highly saturated nitrile. This material is resistant to high temperatures and significantly increases the service interval for timing belts. Timing belts are typically located in the front of the engine and are often covered to protect against dust and debris. They are naturally much quieter and lower in cost compared to timing chains. Timing belts are lighter, resistant to rust, and allow the engine to perform at higher speeds. Because their performance is not dependent on oil pressure in the way that timing chains are. Also, timing belts eliminate harmonics from being transferred into the valve train and are excellent for high RPM applications. Belt drive systems are preferred in pro stock, NASCAR, and many other forms of racing due to these benefits. Because timing belts run dry, it is easy to make cam timing adjustments since the belts are exposed at the front of the engine. 
front mount distributors are a commonly available option, offering benefits to racers from both a service and design standpoint. Older belts had trapezoid-shaped teeth which led to high rates of tooth wear. Newer manufacturing techniques have introduced curved teeth which are quieter and more durable. The main disadvantage of timing belts is that they wear out over time. You won't find a belt that can last the life of the engine. Even if you don't use your engine at all, you still have to replace the belt every 4 to 10 years depending on the engine. This is because rubber naturally deteriorates with time, even when it's just sitting still. Older engines with timing belts typically had a service interval of around 15 to 35,000 miles. Timing belts are also sensitive to oil and coolant spills. A leaky engine will wear out its belt much faster than an engine without leaks. Also, rubber belts don't tolerate high temperatures well. Increased temperatures increase the wear of the rubber. Because of these drawbacks, in 1990, timing chains experienced a resurgence among manufacturers such as Mercedes-Benz, Volkswagen, and BMW. Timing chains use metal sprockets and chains to transfer motion from the crankshaft to the camshaft, and their tensioners rely on hydraulic pressure. This time, timing chains have become more widespread in car engines, due to the lack of the regular maintenance task of replacing a rubber timing belt. Timing chains offer several advantages over timing belts. For one, because they are made of metal, they last longer than belts, in some cases lasting the lifetime of the car. Timing belts typically last between 60,000 to 100,000 kilometers, whereas timing chains, if they need replacing, can be replaced at around 250,000 to 300,000 kilometers. A timing chain may not need to be changed at all if a driver properly maintains their car by monitoring oil levels. Additionally, timing chains tend to be more durable than timing belts, meaning they can withstand higher temperatures and heavier loads without breaking or stretching out of shape. A timing chain needs to be lubricated, so maintaining a sufficient amount and quality of oil in the engine at all times is crucial for keeping it in good working condition. Another advantage of a timing chain is that it will remind a forgetful driver when it needs to be replaced, unlike a timing belt which a driver must remember to change before it's too late. Different styles of timing chains have been utilized over the years, including the silent chain and single and double row roller chains. A silent chain consists of linked plates, often arranged in multiple rows and connected with pins. The profile of these links is designed to mesh with the teeth of sprockets. Silent chains are designed to reduce noise and vibrations, even though they do not eliminate noise completely. Silent chains engage with the sprocket teeth with minimal impact and sliding, resulting in quieter operation. Silent chains are pretty common on many engines because they're simple and cheap to manufacture. A roller chain uses a series of short cylindrical rollers held together by side links. The sprocket rotates the chain and the rollers roll over the teeth of the sprockets. This design minimizes direct metal-to-metal -metal contact, significantly reducing friction compared to sliding contacts, which leads to improved efficiency and less heat generation. Roller chains are more expensive compared to silent chains. Roller chains come in two different types, single and dual rollers. Single roller consists of a single row of rollers and dual roller have two rows of rollers. Single roller chains are lighter and simpler and are suitable for standard power transmission needs. The dual roller chains are stronger, more durable, and less likely to snap compared to single roller chains and are used in heavy duty applications. However, they generate more friction because they have more surface area, which means more horsepower losses. Many of Toyota's models, such as the Corolla and Camry, are equipped with timing chains. Honda has been using timing chains in its engines for many years, including in popular models like the Civic and Accord. BMW is another automaker that frequently uses timing chains in its engine models, such as the 3 Series, 5 Series, and X3. Many Mercedes-Benz models, including the C-Class, E-Class, and S-Class, use timing chains as well. Some of Ford's most popular vehicles, such as the F-150 and Explorer, are also equipped with timing chains. Overall, while timing chains may be slightly more expensive to manufacture, 
Initially, they offer significant benefits over timing belts in terms of durability and maintenance requirements. As a result, many car manufacturers have opted to use timing chains in their engines in order to provide customers with a more reliable and long-lasting vehicle. Another factor to consider is whether your car has an interference engine or a non-interference engine. In an interference engine, the pistons will hit and usually bend some of the valves if the timing belt or chain breaks, causing major internal engine damage that can be expensive to repair. In a non-interference engine, no internal damage should occur if the timing belt or chain breaks. Regardless of the type, the engine will stop immediately if the belt or chain breaks leaving you stranded. Therefore, if you have an interference engine with a timing belt, it's much more important to replace the timing belt at its recommended intervals. Toyota relies heavily on timing belts instead of chains because they are reliable in Toyota engines and every engine they make is non-interference. However, since 2008, some engines have used wet timing belts where the belt is lubricated by engine oil to reduce friction. Traditionally, we have always known that if engine oil gets on a timing belt, it can cause problems. Replacing the front engine shaft seals is a normal part of a timing belt service. In recent years, the use of belt-in oil timing drives has grown. These new systems are very specific about the engine oil they require. Not only is the belt material improved, but the oil also contains special additives that protect the rubber and prevent aging of the belts. As can be expected, the oil change interval becomes even more critical than ever, and if it's ignored, it can lead to significant issues. The advantage of these systems, as claimed by manufacturers, is a reduction in friction of up to 30% compared to standard belts. They are particularly noted in some modern engines, though their implementation in high-performance applications is still developing. Overall, belt and oil systems represent an innovative evolution in engine design, combining lubrication and timing functions to enhance performance and longevity. Camless engines may be the future for supercars. The valves can be opened electrically without any mechanical actuation. This tech has existed for a while on larger engines, but there is considerable interest in scaling it down for automotive use. So that's it. What do you think about these timing mechanisms? Which is better? Let me know in the comments. And finally, thanks for watching.